no introduction, so we welcome Brother Victor. Good evening, brother, and welcome. Good evening, Chris. Uh, bro, am I audible enough? Yes, bro. Yes, yes. Yeah. So as the topic has been mentioned, what we are going to look at, uh, let me just explain to you in a sentence. We are going to look at the goal of this Lenten season is not just giving up, huh? giving up chicken, giving up vegetable, <laughs> okay, giving up this, giving up chocolate. That's not the goal. The goal is whatever we do, it should be leading us to transform my life. Life transformation. Uh, that basically means what God wants my life to be, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it for that purpose. So that is the goal. Now, how does this transformation happens? Even today, psychology confirms if you want to transform your life, you have to focus on practices, not desire. Now, the problem is all of us have a desire. You know, I want my life to change. Uh, I want my life. I want a strong prayer life. Okay. I really want to come up in my ministry. We all have this wonderful desires. Sad part is we don't know, we don't have any idea to accomplish this desire. What are some of the practices I must bring in my life? Because desire without practices is equal to dying with all our desires remaining desires. Okay. One of the sad things that is going to happen to uh, many people is we are going to die with our desires, remaining desires. We did nothing about that desire. God calls us that when we have a desire for something, desire to transform our life, that desire has to uh, go into a practice. We need to have some practices that will help us to achieve that desire. Jesus himself said that. If anyone wishes to follow me. In another word, if anyone desires to follow me. He never said, keep that desire See that that desire doesn't go away, grow in the desire. No. The next thing he tells us is, please get into action. What are the actions? Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. Action. And so today, if you find, if you are frustrated in your life, that you have not grown enough, uh, you are not able to make uh, go to the next level of your spiritual life. Desire is not the problem. You have not figured out what practices I need to bring in my life so that I'm able to achieve what I want to achieve. So it's all about practices. Now this theme is mentioned, uh, as the theme is mentioned, transforming our lives. That's the desire. How do we do that? Through Lenten practices. So we're going to look at uh, what those Lenten practices are and you will be surprised how those Lenten practices the church has given us. Can we go to the previous slide? Yeah. The Lenten practices that the church gives us, in fact, there are only three of them, will be surprised. Uh, what is their main goal? Why does the church only calls us to do these three things? Not just one. Huh? Many of us are talking about, I'll give up this, I'll give up that. That's only one. There are three things we are all called to do in the season of Lent. In, on Ash Wednesday, the gospel reading tells us about these three things. And we will look at, why do these three things? Why not do more? Or why not do less? Why only three? So that's what we're going to have this. And how these three things that we do achieves the goal of inner transformation. So let's start with this teaching. So the first point I want you to, I just decided to give you a starter. If you are frustrated today with your life, please, uh, there is no deficiency of desire. There is enough desire. Please figure out what practices, whether it's you are frustrated with your family life, what practices you need to start as a spouse, uh, as a husband, as a wife, what practices? Focus on practices. Transformation only comes through practices. Okay? Uh, otherwise, it's nil. So what are the practices? Sit tonight before the Lord. Figure out at least two practices that you need to start to achieve your desires. That's a little psychology of achievement. You know, it's desires plus practices. Now let's do a reading uh, from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which talks about Article 1.4. 3, 4. Article 1, 4, 3, 4 talks about length and interior penance. Okay? Now this gives us, uh, let's read this. The interior penance of the Christian can be expressed in many and various ways. Now let's understand this. Catholic, the Catholic Church, you know, the, uh, the writings can be like sometimes like Shakespeare English. 
okay it just bounces over our head so when we read that we are supposed to understand what we are reading so let's understand this first part the word the interior penance what does the word interior penance means and the catechism says interior penance means my inner desire to change my inner desire to change i have a desire to change that's what the word penance means so this in interior desire of change needs to be expressed you see that's the next thing don't remain at the desire level find a way you can express your desire and desires are expressed by practices okay so the catechism says don't keep your desire for change as a desire express it okay and it says it can be expressed in many and various ways there are various things uh so noise due to the wind i think so the fan is on uh, am i uh, is this better bro, bro? is this better uh, but because of the noise background noise um, is, is, uh, your voice is not clear we are not able to oh, now this is better yeah this okay okay bro. but still there's a background uh, i can see the screen still there is a background noise then i think so i will have to check out and again check in perhaps no no stop okay, brother carry on carry on yeah okay yeah yeah so perhaps i'll catch the mic a little close so the scripture in the church fathers talks about three practices so the scripture ani puran puri hai and the early church fathers also talks about three forms three practices what are those fasting and these are the three things we are all called not one we are called to do all these three things in the season of life fasting prayer and alms giving now if you see every ash wednesday the gospel reading is the same matthew chapter 6 and that is where the church makes us aware right at the beginning of lent that this are the three things god is expecting you to do this lent how we are going to do it that we can decide but these three things needs to be done what are those three things jesus spoke about this when you give alms when you pray and when you fast okay so these are the three practices prayer fasting prayer and alms giving now why only these three practices because these three practices brings conversion in three areas all of us need conversion not in one area there are three areas we need conversion there are three areas where maybe we need transformation and what are those three areas it says i'm fasting prayer arms giving which express conversion in relationship to oneself i must change my own personal life my relationship with myself okay my relationship with myself that is called what we have to look at is self mastery self mastery where i don't allow my desires my appetites to control me i am controlling them i have those desires i have those appetites but the problem is who is controlling what who is controlling whom so sometimes those appetites and those desires of the flesh can be controlling us ruling our lives conversion to oneself is gaining self mastery as we look in another passage in the catechism which talks about we have to attain self mastery and lent is all about where god is saying you need to grow in the fruit of self control self control is all about mastering yourself mastering your appetites mastering your desires okay so that's the conversion conversion to one self, conversion to god no 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 i need relation to be converted there is a background noise someone's mic needs to be muted yeah just conversion to god okay what uh, what brings uh, conversion to god prayer so you see prayer brings conversion to god fasting brings conversion to self and alms giving brings conversion in relationship with others so i need to change in three areas myself that is self mastery uh, my relationship with god growing in my prayer life and intimacy with the lord and my relationship with others through the practice of alms giving now that is what the catechism says now the first point i want to draw across is many of us you know traditionally what we have what we do during the season of lent and this is where our lent uh, season is incomplete we only think about what i'm going to give up i'm not going to eat meat i'm not going to eat chocolate no it's not only about giving up 
giving up is just fasting what about prayer and alms giving in what way i'm practicing that otherwise my lent is incomplete that's what the catechism says that's what the early church fathers are saying so i need to be doing all the three practices okay so we are called now we will understand we will look in this teaching why only this three and what 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 do this three do in my life how does it transform my life okay can we go to the next slide so let's have an overview of the lesson what we are going to cover in this lesson is uh, let's have a look at that okay so this is what we are going to look at the drama of salvation history we will understand this three practices uh, in the salvation history we will understand the biggest problem all of us have called the triple concupiscence what is a uh, very big term okay so let me make it simple for you what is first of all let us understand what is concupiscence concupiscence is a theological term which the theologians catholic theologians and the church uses for a inclination to sin we all have inclinations to sin we sin because we have an inclination to sin so that inclination to sin is called concupiscence and triple concupiscence means we have three inclinations to sin so now three inclinations to sin three practices ha ah. already it started making some sense triple concupiscence basically means these are the three things that will stop us from growing in holiness these are the three obstacles which will always obstruct us from going close to god and let me tell you all of us have those three obstacles right from the pope till that it's like you know you go for the exam and if your children are appearing for the exam everyone has got the same question paper isn't it question paper is same what is not same marks <laughs> sadly that is not the same why when the question paper is same why the marks are different what answers you wrote that only will decide the marks praise god god has given us the same question paper right from adam till the last person they will have this three question papers all of us so today you and me so none of us can say my problem is big hello the question paper is same maybe you are not doing your study well okay so don't blame the question paper don't blame the result focus on your response so we all have this three question papers and this three things can stop us from growing in holiness It can stop us from living out our identity we have to live out our identity what is my identity as we will see that in this teaching then we will look at how okay adam and eve faced the same exam they failed the people of israel faced the same three exam they failed they had they were supposed to pass huh? but they failed then the king of israel he failed and then our lord jesus christ conquers this triple concupiscence he conquers it and he shows us the way how to conquer it then we will look at the third part how to conquer the triple concupiscence we have to conquer it huh? otherwise if it conquers us if the triple concupiscence keeps on conquering us then we are growing in unholiness our life is unholy and then we will look at how this practice of triple concupiscence is practiced in the church in various ways we are going to get a lot of oohs and ahs oh now i know oh the priest why they take the three vows you know why those three vows and what is the meaning of those three vows oh now i understood why the religious takes only the three vows and what is the meaning of those three vows vows they have to take vows thank god we have not to take vows but they have to take vows to conquer the triple concupiscence so then we will see how lent is supposed to prepare us for the exam this three exam that we are going to face all our life and lent is the time where god is saying asking us like we ask our children beta are you studying exams are coming near are you studying and that's what god is saying to you your life is coming to an end soon are you conquering are you conquering this so this three practices are not supposed to be done only in lent they have to be done all the years lent is just a reminder like we give our children reminder are you studying lent is a reminder where god tells 
are you doing these things so god has kept a special season for us to just to remind us whether we are doing these three things so that's what we are going to cover in the entire session can we go to the next slide now we start with the teaching the drama of salvation history what we're going to look here is uh, two questions that i want you to keep in mind what is our main calling so we're going to look at what adam was called for what the people of israel were called for what the king of israel was called for what jesus when he was tempted what again and again the devil called him the devil called him with a name identity okay so what is our main calling now this calling word sadly many of us we say you know i want to know what is god's calling for my life the sad part is we are trying to discover god's calling with related to ministry ministry is a secondary calling secondary the primary calling the first calling all of us have is something else and if we miss that calling and we are doing ministry then we are like matthew chapter 7 those people in matthew chapter 7 lord we cast out in that day many will say lord i cast out demons in your name deliverance ministry people who are exercising deliverance ministry lord i prophesied in your name i was given prophecies in your name prophecy ministry prophetic ministry lord i did this in your name and the lord gives them a shocker just imagine you were casting out the devils you had a powerful deliverance ministry in the name of jesus you are casting out the devils and the lord tells you on the judgment day i don't know you who are you and some of us will get a shock lord you don't know me come on i was the one who was casting out all the de devils the lord says yeah maybe you worked for my organization <laughs> okay you worked for my organization and for that i gave you salary also but you and i never had any relationship why i never i did the work of god you know please listen to this i did the work of god i never did the will of god and sometimes there are certain works which are not will i must focus on doing the will of god in my life so some of us we are god willing i hope so all of us who are listening to me today you don't get shocked on the judgment day where the lord tells you i don't know you so we have to focus on our main calling living out our main calling so first we are going to look at the main calling what is the main calling then we will look at how the enemy tries to keep us away from our main calling and he uses those three things three things he will use us three problems all of us have which the enemy will use to keep us away from this main calling that we don't live out that calling and he doesn't mind we serving god or huh? serve serve so no no one wonder sir after serving you are coming to me only because you have not lived out your main calling so that's what we going to look what is my main calling and what are the three problems that will stop me from living out my main calling so that's what we are going to look in this first part let's go to the next slide i hope so now it's very clear so let's have a look at what is my main calling there is a verse in the scripture that gives us an idea this is my favorite verse okay i'll tell you why why it's my favorite verse i'm going to take a little time in explaining that the second letter of peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 you will be getting the slides and huh? the slides you all will be getting so i suggest uh, don't take every note only what you see missing in the slide write that down okay because you will be getting the slide so you can do it for your personal reflection so second letter of peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 4 he tells us god has given us two things first look at the first one divine power god has given us he has his divine power has given us so god has what god has given us divine power not power the power is divine power what does that what is the goal of that divine power next time when you are singing more love more power why 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 more love more power why god wants god wants to give you more power this verse tells us his divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness god gives you divine power to live a godly life not just to be free from problems to live a godly life in temptation 
in testing times okay how does this divine power comes through the knowledge of him now look at how the power comes through the knowledge now the knowledge word knowledge means not the mind knowledge it means intimate knowledge i know we know each other very well we are very intimate and close with each other so the more my relationship with jesus is deepened the more of his power i will experience in my life okay who has called us by his glory and goodness so first god gives us divine power to live godly lives this is the only verse in the bible that tells us why god has given us divine power and why god has given us promises now many of us we are confused about god's promises huh? we feel god's promises are all to get whatever i want hello you are wrong and this is the only verse in the bible which gives us an understanding why god has given us promises what is the purpose of promises so look at the next line thus he has given us his precious and great promises god's promises are precious and they are great why why god has given us promises as i said this is the only verse in the bible that explains why god has given us promises now that's the first purpose why you and i must name it and claim it sadly i guarantee you 1% of the people only are doing this the 99% is using it for wealth and prosperity which is not the main purpose why god has given us promises he says is he has given us his precious and very great promises so that through them through the promises you may escape now look that's the goal you may escape from the corruption that is there in the world what does it mean the writer peter our first pope is saying the world has the power to corrupt our souls the world has the power to corrupt our souls and we must escape this corruption you have to escape otherwise the corruption will enter in and how we escape the corruption that is where the promises come so first promises are given so that we escape the corruption that is in the world because of lust so we have a problem the world on the outside lust on the inside we all have lust intense desire fleshy appetites now here is the reason what is salvation all about this is the verse in the bible that tells us before we go to heaven what should happen to our lives this is what is called dying in grace which is just that we must die in a state of grace this is what it means and may become partakers in the divine nature our life on earth is all about putting on the divine nature ah salvation is not about going to heaven only it's not about going to a place but much more than that salvation is putting on the divine nature what does it mean to put on the divine nature let's look to the old testament the creation story in genesis when god created adam and eve he says god made adam and eve in his image and likeness the word likeness means nature so we are called to share the divine nature of god now i'll put a very specific word to that okay but that is what salvation is so before we go ahead in the teaching learn is all about letting my nature go and putting on the nature of god not just not cutting my hair not shaving my beard it's it's letting my nature go and putting on the nature of god that is my main calling if this has not happened in my life uh, my salvation is a big question mark okay salvation is a big question mark salvation is all about sharing in the divine nature of god so let's go to the next slide So now let's have a look at putting on the divine nature. Let's understand this. Am I loud and clear? Yeah, bro, yes, bro. Am I loud and clear? Yeah, yes, brother. Yes, I just bro. got a message. There is a problem in my connectivity. Yeah, there seems to be because you are. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So let's understand. Let's get a let's get a word for that divine nature. Now, one of the ways we understand scripture is by comparing scripture with scripture. What do I mean by that? 
uh, for that you need to have a study bible so in that study bible what you get is when you get a particular word like adam was made in the image and likeness of god so you must understand the word likeness what is the meaning of the word likeness to understand what does the word likeness means so you must go to another passage in genesis again where the word likeness is appearing again and so the another passage where the word likeness appears again so that we understand what does it mean to have the divine nature the another place where the word divine uh, likeness appears is genesis chapter 5 in genesis chapter 5 we find it says adam had a son so adam was the father and he had a son and then it goes on to say adam had a son in his own likeness see the word likeness comes there so what is the meaning of the word likeness the meaning of the word likeness is adam had a son adam was the father he had a son the word likeness means father son relationship god has made me as a son that's my identity i am the son and i am the daughter of god now when did i become the son and daughter of god at baptism at baptism i became the son and the daughter of god god adopted me now there is a problem and i will like you to listen to this problem have you seen sometimes those who want to join the police uh, police force they have to go through training and learning okay some studies they have to do and they have to go through training so after their training is successful after their training is successful their studying is successful then on a particular day they are appointed as police people they are appointed as a police officer where the government says we appoint you as a police officer and you have to take a vow now that person has become a police officer in position that's what we have become the son of and daughter of god in position at our baptism so that is the reality we are the sons and the daughters of god now the problem is this the person who has become a policeman in position can be a corrupt policeman in practice ah but he's still a policeman but a corrupt one now the same thing can go wrong with us through baptism god has made us his sons and daughters in position in practice i may be a corrupt son of god i may be a corrupt daughter of god remember peter was talking about the verse i read previously we must escape the corruption that is in the world that is the problem all of us have to live truly to our position as a son and daughter what does that mean walking in obedience remember the first sin was disobedience to be a true son and a daughter of god is all about walking in obedience so a main calling so let's answer this question a main calling in life is to be the son and the daughter of god in practice otherwise we like the police officer we are in position we are the police officer practice corrupt officer so i hope so that is clear now so now let's have a look at all the people in the bible who were called the sons of god god says you are a calling you are my son So in fact there were four of them in the whole bible there were four of them and how these four of them face the three problems that you and i are going to face that we will look next so let's look at the first one adam is called the son of god in luke chapter 3 verse 23 and 38 look at this verse jesus when he began his ministry was about 30 years of age being the son of joseph so who was the son of joseph jesus was the son of joseph and joseph was the son of adam and adam was the son of god so look at when god created adam it was very clear god is saying adam your main calling is you are my son so adam's main calling was he was a son of god now let's have a look at another person who was called the son of god in the bible okay so first we look at they had this divine calling can we go to the next slide so now the next one we have is the people of israel they are also called the son of god In Exodus chapter four verse twenty two, it says, "God is telling Moses, and you shall say to Pharaoh, 
Thus says the Lord, Israel is my first born son. So Israel is the first born son. <coughs> what does it mean? Israel is the first born. Then who is the second and the third born? People of Canaan, people of Egypt, they are the second and the third. So the first born son has to bring all the other sons to God. That is what it means to be the first born. Okay? That the first born son must bring. Egypt is also the child of God. Come on, don't say that they are not the children of God. No, they are. But you need to bring them to the true God. So that is what it means. So Israel had a calling to be the son. Now I'm just going a little sidetrack because I'm going to explain the next word. Let my son go. Now what does it mean, let my son go? Deliverance. I want to deliver my son. I want to free my son. Why God wants to deliver us? Why God wants to touch us? That he may serve me. I know that is where I sometimes doubt when people tell me I went for the retreat and I had an experience of the Lord in my life. I says, but I can't see that aspect that he may serve. I'm not seeing that experience. Let my son go. Why? Why God is giving us deliverance? Let my son go. Why? That he may serve me. The word serve also means worship me. The purpose of healing, the purpose of deliverance is so that we worship and serve God. That's what Jesus said in the temptation. You shall serve, worship the Lord your God and him only you will serve. Giving us that clarity. So just a sidetrack, you know, that we need to know whether our healing is genuine. Huh? Whether I had a, my encounter to the Lord is genuine. It should lead me to worship and serve the Lord. So Israel was, Adam was called the son of God. Israel is also called the son of God. Next. Can... Now the next person who's called the son of God is the king of Israel. Brother, uh, yeah. In 1, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 11, Solomon is called the son of God. King Solomon. It says, God is telling David, I will raise up your offspring after you. I will be a father and he will be my son. Look at the word, son is appearing again. He will be my son. So even the king of Israel, Solomon was called the son of God. Now, why am I telling you all this? Some of you saying, what is he saying? Come on, give, take some time. I'm coming to that. First is, our main calling is people failed to live out that calling. And why they failed? If you don't understand the failure part, Lenten practices you won't understand. Okay? So here, Solomon was called to be the son of God. Can we go to the next slide? And now we find Jesus was also called the son of God, the fourth person. Okay? Jesus was in the temptation. The devil is again and again telling Jesus, if you are the son of God, look at that. The devil is trying to tempt Jesus not to live out practically the son of God. Okay? Don't live it out practically. Now, not only Jesus was called, you and I are called to be the son of God. Romans 8, 15 says that. Romans 8, 15 says you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of sonship. You and I are called to be the sons and the daughters of God. That is our main calling, not ministry. Okay, that is our main calling. Another scripture verse we look at, which tells us we are called the son of God. Can we go to the next slide? So the next slide also tells us, John, 1 John, the first letter of John, chapter 3, verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children. See, called, called what? The children of God. Main calling. That's what I want to get in your mind. Our main calling is son of God. You know, in this Lenten season, one of my uh, practices that I've been doing, reflecting every day, and is really helping me. First, I'm becoming aware of my identity. It's very important, first of all, to discover who we are. Who, who. So, more and more, I'm reflecting on, I am, I am the son of God. Now, the next step is, I'm going to become radical. Serious. In living like the son of God. That's what my goal in Lent is, this Lent. I'm going to be radical. First, first. Reflecting daily, who am I? I'm a son of God. I'm not. Uh, I'm not made for pleasure. I'm not made to please myself. I'm made to please my Father. My fulfillment comes in pleasing the Father, being His true Son. 
in this in practice and then becoming radical radical means any cost i'll pay but i'll live out my identity that is the main focus of lent so here we are called the son of god and that is what we are so that first question what is my main calling you and i are called to be the sons of god to understand the lenten practices we must first understand the identity because when jesus was tempted the devil told him if you are the son of god he is using the word if he is trying to create and doubt in jesus' mind whether you are to be the son of god and jesus had to say hello you don't know what you are saying you know i don't agree with you i am the son of god and jesus the temptation was all about being the son of god in practice by saying no to the flesh son of god in practice now let's get to the next question what are the problems the son of god faces okay uh yeah can we go to the next slide and i'd like to stop it there is one slide missing here and i would like you to take the scripture verse down so if you and i are called the son of god there are three things three obstacles we all have and these three obstacles what they do is they will stop us from living out our identity what do i mean by that they will these three obstacles will stop us from practicing being a son of god in practice and we must all be aware what are these three exams that i may fail i may fail to live out a son yes i am a son of god in position but in practice i may fail so what are those things that may fail me so one john the second first letter of john chapter 2 verses 15 to 17 second letter of john sorry first letter of john one john chapter 2 verses 15 to 17 now this is what it says do not love the world or the things of the world for those who love the world the love of the father is not in him this basically says that those of us who are so in madly in love with the world you can't experience god's love you can't experience then it says for now the three problems are mentioned there for all that is in the world what are the three things that are in the world the lust of the flesh uh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life three exams all inside of us what are they lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the pride of life these are the three obstacles we all have three exams we all have and what these three ex- what these three things can do they will stop me from living out my identity as a son of god so let's understand these three things what do what what does it mean by the lust of the flesh the lust of the flesh means inordinate desire for pleasure those who are taking down notes you will have to write this down because these things are not there in the slide lust of the flesh is inordinate not desire inordinate desire okay inordinate desire for pleasure so the first p pleasure that can be food that can be sex that can be entertainment that can be a desire for comfort and you know some of us have a great desire for comfort huh we go for retreat comfort we here in bombay we have every month before the pandemic could stop for the last so many years we have a monthly retreat called the jesus encounter retreat, which happens at andheri vinala every second weekend second friday of the is a we start with the second weekend because second weekend people have a holiday friday saturday sunday and on the first day when people come there for the retreat it goes packed the retreat is packed brother travel who is myself we are five six speakers at this retreat okay we have been doing it for last many years but one of the problem we face on the first day is a group of people who come there for the retreat then they go to the rooms if you want to vinala andheri that is a chakala you know for the retreat center if you have gone you will find the bed should be under the fan na the beds are am i 
am i audible enough i think you connect with my net i'm finding am i audible enough audio is okay brother yes. i think your net connection yeah. is okay thank you yeah yeah you can hear me now yes yeah thank you so the first complaint people give us you know is you know they come from flats where there are acs here there are no ac and the first complaint you know oh you know the rooms it's not ventilation is not there the fans are in the center the fans why the fan is in the center get some extra fan and then the next complaint is about the food and then i my first session starts on saturday morning and this is the first 10 minutes i speak on this i said you have come here for this retreat your focus is spiritual food can you teach yourself to do 3 days 3 days without comfort come on 3 days of fasting from comfort you must see their faces become long we are addicted to comfort addicted uh, i i just can't take it addicted to comfort so it is higher of the flesh we come there for spiritual food but we want spiritual food with fleshy comfort of come flesh will also be in comfort come on that's a kind of penance na i'll tell you what i do you know i'm just sharing with honest sharing not to praise myself whenever i am at vinalaya i don't sleep on the bed because i don't get sleep on the bed i do i don't get sleep what do i do i'm just on my shorts and i'm on the floor and you know sometimes it's so hot i put water over my body this water apply water and i come and sleep under the fan why you get cooling effect <laughs> okay cooling effect of the fan the fan cools you and every 3 hours i get up then again i apply water so that i but never complain i am the speaker and i need a little special this no come on you know learn to do without comfort for some days and offer it up to god so desire of the flesh lust of the flesh okay sex food entertainment anything that you look for good feelings it can be your mobile also you know good feelings constantly good feelings you want the next lust of the eyes lust of the flesh pleasure lust of the eyes possession what i see i want now why i want i may not need it no i don't need it but i want it and i don't go by my needs i go by my wants so if my neighbor has got a tv i will have i will have a better one than that if one of my relative has made a gold ornament i'll make another i'll buy 10 grams more and i'll make another one more prop so lust of the eyes is in or in you lost you brother the connection is very bad yeah am i audible enough yes brother sorry there was a, there is some problem with my neck today in fact to be very honest most of the time when i have done this session i have got neck problems otherwise i don't get <laughs> you can imagine the talk is so important okay so inordinate desire for possessions i ask you to make a commitment this lent you have to live by your needs god is jehova jaira who has promised to meet our needs not our greeds okay so some of us are upset with god he is not given me i want to ask you a very honest question is it your need or your greed because your needs are met so inordinate desire for possessions pleasure possessions pride of life what is pride of life inordinate love of oneself i love myself so much that i feel i am the most important one 
when i go to the wedding ceremony the people should come and ask me you have come and they must treat me like a special guest i know you know there whenever there were weddings in our family many people pretty got pretty upset with us you know why they got upset not because not the food was not good that was not the reason we we couldn't go and meet them and ask them you know how are you came thank you very much you know the people who have uh, have the weddings what pressure they go through you must go and meet them and ask them one simple question you need any help i am there rather than waiting i have come where is the father where is the mother you know where are the brothers you know i have come and no one is coming to meet me and welcome me inordinate you know and then we feel upset i why why a vendor no one asked me koi pucha nahi puchna chahiye then i want to be known i want to be seen i am going to talk you a very hard thing huh, here please before we came to the lord we had this desire to be known and to be seen psychology tells us all of us have this ingrained huh? i want to be known i want to be seen jesus tells on the you know ash wednesday the reading is the pharisees fast in order to be seen ah they pray in order to be seen they give arms in order to be seen now all of us want to be seen you know when we come to the charismatic renewal this desire to be seen gets baptized and it comes in another way i have not yet found a person who had had an encounter with the lord who will come and say i like to put the chairs but every person including myself i'm putting myself also here huh? i am going to preach the lord hello why preach come on let's go down why preach the chairman the chairman means one who puts the chairs and the one who preaches are going to get the same cup reward salary is going to be the same that is what we have the parables no those who came in the third hour fourth hour fifth hour 11th hour got the same salary what does it mean all workers are going to get the same salary when the salary is the same come on bhai tera problem kya hai to preach kar ya to chair dal nahi preach kar i am going to lead praise and worship why praise and worship why 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 i want to be seen glory to god hello glory to god comes also by putting chairs when i was 17 years old and i came to the charismatic renewal in 86 this was the this was the first uh, what i can say this was the first hit the hit that i got i went to my prayer group leader and i said you know she uh, i told my prayer group leader uh, sister uh, you had prayed over me remember before going for the retreat and you had told me god has called me to preach she said yeah 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 i told you so i said i have come from the retreat now i am all on fire and i have to preach the word of god so she very humbly told me very wise leader i know she was a very wise woman old woman lot of wisdom she said look i told you what i never told you when what means what god is calling for i never told you when it's very important to know the when also anyways i'll pray and find out whether god wants you to preach so next tuesday meet me so next tuesday i happen to meet her after the prayer meeting i'm all excited you know and next tuesday you know in the coming tuesdays victor and victor is going to become brother victor and is going to give a talk you know all excited to be seen and she threw a bomb on me you know she told me something like this i would like you to hear you know victor i prayed about you and i was asking the lord uh, lord what are you calling this child for and the lord told me he is called you to serve him i got excited because i thought serving means next talk i am giving but then she threw the bomb she said not in the place you said i said which place i said you said preaching not there you know with the last 6 months i been praying to god no one comes for the prayer meeting you know no one is there to put the chairs no one comes before the prayer meeting to put the chairs i am so old 
have to come half an hour early to put the chairs and i'm praying last six months i've been praying god send someone send someone last week when i was praying for you god said that's the one what happened to victor's face yeah god has called me to serve him chairman chairman i can say happily the first work i did for the lord was i was the chairman of my group the chairman is the one who puts the chairs before the prayer meeting starts and he puts them back after the prayer meeting gets over he is the first and the last the alpha and the omega he comes before everyone comes and he goes after everyone goes and in the prayer meeting the leader will thank everyone thank you for leading us into the powerful time of praise and worship thank you for giving us the word of god and who is forgotten chairman when all the meeting went because of the chairman and for one year i was the chairman of my group i was one day talking to brother trevor lewis i, I don't know whether you all know him and i was surprised that his first work was also he was the chairman of his group so i was discussing with him i said you know why in the world god starts us with the chairman so he gave me a classic answer so that before we serve him we become a servant we must become a servant before we serve him and i agree with his answer yes god wants you to be a servant and pride says i am not going to be a servant i am going to be seen i am going to be known lust of the flesh lust of the eyes pride of life now as we come to the conclusion let's go to the next part can we go to the next slide as we come to the end of the session first part now we look at uh, can we go to the next slide yeah this slide i want this slide okay now here is where the triple concupiscence all of us now you understood what is the triple concupiscence three inclinations to sin what are they we all have them lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the pride of life now let's understand another verse from the catechism article 377 it says the mastery over the world that god offered a man from the beginning now once again catechism verses needs explanation what is the catechism talking about the mastery over the world that god offered man from the beginning in the beginning when god created the creation story we find when god created the world and he created man one of the commands he gave the man was rule there were three things god called man for first god made man in his image and likeness called to reflect three hours called to reflect god then he says rule okay rule over the fish rule over the created things so that was the mastery be a ruler we lost the brother again the first man was unimpaired in order of his whole being he was free from the triple concupiscence so we were free from that okay why we had mastery can we go to the next slide as we come to an ending so that's what we need to gain self mastery let's go to the next slide can we go to the next slide hello is it not the one brother god of course. yeah good triple concupiscence in history now let's see yes now as we go to the next slide we will end up with this if you look at the temptation adam and eve faced in the garden of eden we have this three they were tempted in three areas you know it says when the woman saw the fruit when the woman saw that the 
it was good for food that is the three things mentioned here good for food in genesis chapter 3 verses 3 to 5 when the woman saw that it was good for food now there you find out also another that i will take it next time something what is the original sin all about what is the main root sin we will see it next time but now let's look at adam who was called the son of god had to face the exam everyone who was called the son of god had to face the exam what was the exam lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the pride of life we will also face this exam so here it is said adam the woman saw that a tree was good for food good for food is lust of the flesh delight to the eyes lust of the eyes desire to make one wise pride pride it says she took it and ate it adam and eve failed the test failed the test what happened to adam and eve can happen to all of us as i conclude in order to understand i am going to conclude on this note in order to understand the lenten practices we must understand these two things my main calling is the son and the daughter of god and my three exams if i don't understand these three exams i will have no clue why do i pray why do i fast why do i give arms how do these three practices help me to conquer the triple concupiscence that is the goal of lent and if you are not been doing this i will tell you your lent is incomplete i will end up with a word of practice a word of wisdom tonight before you go to sleep please become aware in what way the lust of the flesh today is trying to get you what way the lust of the eyes is trying to get you what way the pride of life the desire to be seen the desire to be known what way it is taking hold of you and in what ways you can conquer that of course we are going to look at in the next session how do we conquer that but before that we will look at how israel failed how solomon failed how jesus passed the test and jesus is so good he not only tells us the question paper jesus has leaked out the question paper and he has leaked out the answers amen to that why he wants us to pass and how we do this three practices in the season of lent let's bow our heads and pray let's ask the lord to give us enlightenment to really have a fruitful lent that this lent is going to be different from all the other lents we have had over our lives lord we praise you and we thank you for what you have spoken to us today lord thank you for making us aware that lent is all about reflecting what is my identity what is my main calling and lent is all about reflecting lord whether i am living out my main calling and lord it is about reflecting and knowing what are the obstacles what are the things that are preventing me in what way the lust of the flesh in what way the lust of the eyes in what way the pride of life is preventing me from living out my main calling and lord how i can how i can conquer this triple concupiscence through fasting prayer and alms giving we pray lord that you will continue to learn this and we pray for the grace lord that this lent will be a different lent for all of us Lord, to those of us who have only made decisions that I'm going to give this up and I'm going to give that up today, Lord, before we go to sleep in night, at night, help us to reflect and find out how am I going to practice prayer, how I'm going to practice fasting, and how I'm going to practice alms giving in this land. Because these are the three things you are telling us to do in land. Next Saturday, next Saturday, Lord, we will find out why we need to do these three things. Lord, we pray for the grace that we will start. Doing the three things daily. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Who do you bro? Thank you, brother Victor, for sharing with us on transforming lives through Lenten practices. Looking forward for the next session.